we can quickly simulate a coin flip on a graphing calculator. Press math, scroll over once to the left because you're here now in the math and you want to select the probability commands, so go to left. Now I see all these different probability commands and the seventh one is random binomial generator. It's a random event generator. So I pick seven, right, and binomial if it's the case with the coin flips. So we can simulate a coin experiment and we can model it in different ways. Let's say I have five coins and I'm, I want to flip them and I want to record the results and I want to repeat this trial ten times. How can I set that up here? Well, the first number I'm going to enter is five. That's the amount of coins I'm flipping or objects that I'm working with. Then I enter a comma. Then I enter in 0.5. Now, in this case, it's 0.5, of course, because we're assuming these are fair coins and there's a one half chance of a success. But that might, this number, of course, will change depending on what type of experiment you're looking at or what your probability for a success is. In this case, it's one half for heads. Then I enter a comma, and the last number I ent enter is the number of trials, which we set as 10. So right now, this means I'm going to generate um, 10 trials. Each trial is going to toss five coins, and each coin has a one half chance of landing on a heads. So when you press enter, you get this list. And what these numbers represent is on each of the 10 trials, how many times did you get a heads? So in the first trial, we got three heads. On the next trial, we flipped another five coins and got three heads. And then on the next trial, we got another three heads. And then on the next trial, we only we got no heads, and so forth. And you can scroll through this list. What's really nice about this is you have this list of numbers. You can now do things with this list of numbers. And we'll go over that in other videos. But basically what you'll do, I would save it by pressing STOW. All right, it's taking the answer we have. It's going to save it as some variable. And I'm going to save it as a list. If you look at this area in the graphing calculator, these numbers are presets to different lists, L1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. If I press second and then 1, notice it gives me the variable for list 1. And now that means this list is saved as list 1. So you can now simply, well, quickly set up a, hist a histogram with this data or do other things as well. So one of the keys to using the graphing calculator is saving these lists of numbers and then performing operations on those lists later. And we'll go into that, don't worry. And there you can just test it by pressing enter to test that, yes, list one is the one you want, the one you saved, and the one you just created. Thanks.